please. Let me go back. Let me go back one more time. I'll do it right. I'll do it right this time. I'm sorry, Penny. I'll change it. <laughs> I'll change it. There is a school of thought within the lost fanbase that believes the past could indeed be altered. But even with these alterations to the timeline, the outcome would always be the same. Therefore, this is what Eloise Hawking meant when she talked about course correction. But the very idea of course correction is seemingly at odds with the rule of whatever happened, happened. Because if you change one single thing, even the tiniest of things, it changes everything. This is the nature of causality. Now, let's say Desmond did change things in Season 3 episode, Flashes Before Your Eyes. The very fact his future self was awake in his past self's body would mean he would be changing things just by behaving in a different way to how he behaved the first time around. This would have huge ripple effects. Interacting with Charlie in the street would create new causal pathways because this, allegedly, never happened before. Roping in his friend to talk about time travel down the pub would also trigger a chain reaction of changes since both men would have been doing other things on this day and creating other causal chains. Arguing with Eloise about destiny on a city bench is another significant alteration because Desmond, and Eloise, should apparently be elsewhere right now. All of these things add up to create more and more ripples in the stream of time. Yet somehow, Eloise knows that the man with the red shoes is going to die. If this conversation is not supposed to be happening, and Desmond is changing the past, then how would Eloise know what is about to happen to this very specific man in this very specific moment? Eloise has been waiting for future Desmond's arrival, and was prepared for the fact they would have this very conversation on this very bench, in this very place. Where they could observe this tragic event happen. She had foreseen it. There is no original timeline A in which Desmond never did any of this. In fact, we know what Desmond experiences with Eloise in 1996 is what always happened because when the two meet again at the lamp post in season 5 episode, 316, he references their original meeting. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Desmond, but the island isn't done with you yet. This woman cost me four years of my life, four years that I'll never get back, because you told me that I was supposed to go to that island. There was my bloody purpose. Which means their London bench conversation always happened. Desmond's unstuck consciousness from 2004 interacted with Eloise in 1996. He simply didn't remember the conversation until after he turned the fail-safe key. Before that key was turned, Desmond would only recall being belittled by Charles Widmore and thrown out. Drowning his sorrows down the pub. Looking for an engagement ring but getting cold feet. Then breaking up with Penny by the Thames. He would not remember the Eloise part of it because his 2004 consciousness is fully awake and in control in that scene. It is absolutely worth noting how Desmond gets struck in the head by the cricket bat. An event he recalled happening to someone else. This comes at the end of his mind-traveling adventure, and this whack to the head no doubt gave him a bad concussion afterwards. One which likely resulted in 1996 Desmond having a hazy and confused remembrance of this whole day. Everything 2004 Desmond says and does is what always happened. It's just that 1996 Desmond didn't remember it until he wakes up in the jungle after detonating the energy pocket in the hatch. Eight years after the fact. This is why the episode establishes that 1996 Desmond was already having doubts about himself and his relationship with Penny before ever meeting Eloise. And this is why 1996 Desmond isn't suddenly confused as to why he and Penny are no longer together. Nothing changed from the original timeline. This always happened. The only time that string theory, or the concept of multiverses possibly existing, is ever demonstrated within the show, was with the flash sideways. But, as we discovered, the sideways had nothing to do with the past being changed in 1977, or with alternate timelines created by our characters. In fact, the sideways was beyond time itself. Connecting the detonation of Jughead with the sideways was a red herring. Daniel Faraday claimed that the only hope they could possibly have of being able to change the past was by detonating that hydrogen bomb. And this did nothing but play into, and ensure, the timeline that already existed. 
If a nuclear bomb couldn't remotely change the flow of the river then Desmond stood no chance. You can't change the songs that are on the record, only the order in which you listen to them. That is what we see Desmond doing. Remembering the songs in a non-linear order. Whatever happened, happened. Looking closer at the events of Desmond's life does nothing but reinforce the notion that destiny determines the outcomes of our lives, whether we like it or not. An entire decade of Desmond's life unfolds with the specific purpose of preparing him mentally and physically for pushing the button. Yes, I was scared about the wedding. So I had a few pints, too many maybe. I, I raised my eyes and I asked, am I doing the right thing? And that's the last thing I remember. And when I woke up, I was lying on my back in the street. And I don't know how I got there. And there was this man standing over me, Ruth. And he reached out his hand and he said to me, can I help you, brother? And the first thing I noticed was the rope tied around his waist. And I looked at him and I knew, I knew I was supposed to go with him. I was supposed to leave everything that mattered behind, sacrifice all of it for a greater calling. This intangible feeling that Desmond describes coming from within himself, this pull towards a higher calling. It comes from the source. And this is a perfect distillation of how characters are guided by something from within that they cannot explain. An impulse we cannot quite put our finger on. Our need to turn left instead of right. This feeling drove Desmond towards Brother Campbell, and becoming a monk. He took a vow of silence, and through his time at the monastery, he learns to embrace solitude. So, was this higher calling really about being a monk? Or was it about guiding him towards something else altogether? His relationship with Penny goes on to define his life. But once this relationship blooms to a point of commitment, Desmond gets cold feet again and does what he does best. He runs away, this time to join the army, which teaches him discipline, regimented routine, obedience, and an ability to perform tasks over and over. When his consciousness is scrambled, 1996 Desmond begins having visions of his future aboard the freighter in 2004. As a result of these events, Desmond seeks out his constant. And a broken-hearted Penny is reminded of her love for this man when he shows up on her doorstep. This moment between them stops her from being able to completely move on from what they had. After all, he promised to call her in eight years. Who could forget a promise like that? Desmond would go on to be incarcerated in a military prison some years later, for reasons never fully revealed. We can assume that it had something to do with desertion considering Widmore called him a coward. And we know Desmond runs away from his problems. Being in prison would have seen Desmond living in a confined cell, day in and day out, with nothing and no one but himself for company. These three different chapters of his life were all in service of preparing him for his future in the hatch. The solitude of the monastery. The discipline of the army. The confinement of a prison cell. We know he goes on to cross paths with Libby, another person destined for the island. Who gifts Desmond her late husband's boat. This boat is what takes him to the island, where he spends the next three years putting his experience and disciplines to the test. All of which would lead him to turning that key and exposing him to a full blast of electromagnetic energy. Thereby unsticking his consciousness from his body so he could perpetuate this cycle. This exposure is also what makes it possible for Desmond to uncork the source another three years later. Because his consciousness is unstuck in time, and therefore he is not limited to, nor anchored within, his physical body. Being exposed to the full force of the source's energy does not uncouple his consciousness as it did with the man in black centuries ago. Desmond's experiences in the hatch and all the years leading up to his time pushing the button has protected him from suffering such a fate. Desmond's life was by design. So he could achieve these very acts. So he could save the world, again and again. To make sure that the record, continues to turn.